A friend of mine asked me to find a good wireless headset that can be used with the Xbox One. So I got the Astro A20 and the Plantronics Rig 800LX. So first to look at the design. They each have microphone arms that can't be hidden, but they are flexible and hold their shape, so you can choose their position. The ear cups aren't rotatable on either, so you can't wear them on your shoulders. They are adjustable though. The A20s, these with the Call of Duty graphics, just slide up and down, and have slight tilting for extra comfort. That's with a headband that feels like it's made of foam, nice and soft with a rubberized coat. Same tilt on the rig, but they've gone with an elastic style headband, hard plastic above it, with the added bonus of popping the cups out of the frame, and placing them higher or lower, going for one size fits all. There's a lot of plastic on the frames, which might be an issue on the Astros. While wearing them, I keep hearing them creak and crack. This is a deal breaker for me personally. I think it's to do with the design, so I don't think it's just my copy. They have deep ear cups, and even while just holding these, I could hear them creaking. They're comfortable enough, and it's good that neither are using leather cups. The rig feels great to wear. Definitely more comfortable, and they don't make the sounds while wearing them, despite also having deep cups. You can remove the cups too, but there is that usual leather-like material, so be careful if you're washing them. As for the weights, checking them on the scales, the weight of the rig is about 291 grams. They definitely feel light while wearing them. And about 322 grams for the Astro A20. Rig definitely wins on comfort and weight. But I could wear either for hours without discomfort. And on the back of each you have the usual controls. Power, equalizer, voice and game dial on the A20. Basically the same on the rig. Game and voice dial, power, master volume control, and equalizer on the other side. They both come with little boxes to connect to the PC or Xbox. A20 with the Call of Duty graphic again on this set, then USB, charge, and so on. The rig is a bit more basic with just a switch on the back and button on top. Okay, let's get to the mic testing. This is the A20 at 87%, so it has plenty of volume, which is rare for a wireless headset. For background noise, I don't hear much, but it has a strange pattern when I zoom in, so maybe some filtering going on, which is a good thing. Overall, it is good, but my voice sounds a bit weird compared to other mics, but at least it's not too tinny. The mic on the 800LX is what you would expect on a wireless headset. Low in volume, kind of tinny, but it does okay. I think both of these mics are usable, just nothing to the point of making me say wow. As always, the mic is not the strong point. That said, over game sounds, the 800LX might be easier to hear because it is kind of tinny. Hopefully the Xbox handles the volume better. Moving on to the headphone quality, I make music, but I still haven't figured out how to get volume high like on the radio. The way I do it is wrong, because I ran into an issue with the rig. They distort really badly on my tracks, yet they're fine on everything professionally made. So the majority of games, movies and music are all good. But watching YouTube videos, amateur music and all that, you might run into an issue, because they've done something to the sound, their signature sound profile, and it happens on all equalizer settings. Have a listen to this. It's never happened on any other headset I've tested. Here's what that same song sounds like on the Astro A20. So if you're just dealing with professionally made stuff, the rig are fine. I actually have to step up my audio game. Still, I worry that this is even an issue, especially because no other headset has ever done this. So just something to keep in mind, not a deal breaker. Talking about the sound though, I prefer the Astro A20s. They have a warmer and fuller sort of sound. It's like they have a bigger soundstage, but both are using 40mm drivers. The rig have a decent sound, should be nice and clear in gaming. But again, I'm not so keen on them because of the altered sound profile. And overall for entertainment, I would rather the A20. As for delay, this is not a scientific test, but I do try to rap on beat. And according to this, there's a slight delay on the Astros. It's very minor, but the Rig and ZI8 mixer line up pretty much on point, so they don't seem to have the delay. Quick note on battery life and range, the Rig kept their signal better through walls and had a greater range. And apparently they also have a longer battery life of 24 hours, over about 15 for the Astros. So I've done most of the testing on computer, because that's where I have freedom. But I did test them with the Xbox One S, and it was just plug and play with the rig. With the Astro A20, I had to plug in the USB and optical audio cable just to get the sound. Wouldn't work without both, but they do both work with Xbox One, no problem there. Now some PC highlights while I give my conclusion. They're both decent headsets with their pros and cons, but honestly, I'm not too impressed with either of them. If I had to choose one, I would be going with the Plantronics Rig 800LX. 
because they don't make any sound while I wear them. They're lighter, more comfortable, and I can test my music out to see if it's going to distort. Also the ease of use, just plug in and they work. The Astro A20s, I kind of had a few issues with them. It was even difficult to get the mic working in Windows, and having to plug in two cables on the Xbox, and the creaking sound on the cups, they just don't appeal to me. However, they do have the better overall sound, and a better microphone. So if you're just playing on Xbox and wouldn't have to plug them in all the time, I think they would be the better choice. But only if you can get a set that doesn't creak when just sitting on your head. They both come with the necessary cables, optical audio included for the A20s. So yeah, they can both work, they're both decent, just nothing to really get me excited over. However, I haven't found many headsets that are actually compatible with Xbox One. These are currently the best and pretty much the only ones I've tested. So for now, the search continues. We still have to find the best Xbox wireless headset. I hope that answers some of your questions, and at least gets you closer to making a decision. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave the usual links in the description. And as always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next. Wins the round. Accuracy.